Well, there's two pieces. There's the value, and then there's the decision making. I think it's really important for the whole product community to build an understanding of what value for that product is, what is that uh, shared return that you're looking for. And um, one of the things that we found really powerful is that if we look at all the stakeholders as product partners, and they come from the different domains of the business, customer, and technology. And then we ask, what is value from their point of view, or what we call value considerations? And we explore what the possible value considerations are for each one of them, and at any given point in time, decide which are the most important. Uh, it could be that a user needs to have, uh, they're very cost conscious, or they need to have speed in the product, and the business needs to have a return on investment or market fit, and technology is <clears throat> concerned with the readiness of the architecture. And so we look at all of those dimensions or those aspects of value. And then we have very clear decision-making rules. Who is going to decide? How are we going to decide? So if the decision is which features are we going to deliver in the next release, what is our rule for making decisions? Often consensus is not a good decision rule when it comes to a business situation. There usually needs to be one person who's a decision maker, but who uses input from the rest of the community, from those business technology and customer communities to get input. So we like to have very transparent decision rules and decision making processes where we check in usually along a grain of agreement. But when we combine value with decision making, first we're discussing those value considerations then we're finding everyone's opinion, and then the product manager makes a choice based on um, an education with that whole community. I think the first thing is to be very transparent and explicit about it. First, it seems very simple, but a lot of teams don't do it. Who are those different stakeholders in the business, customer, and technology community? We would do it, do it on a wall. The wall becomes the wall of wonder, where we can all have a shared view of those different stakeholders, write them on posts, list them under business, customer, techno technology, and then ask, okay, which ones are most important now or next, and then what are those value considerations? So we use something called an options board, which looks at your product options after you've explored who those partners are and those value considerations. So make it transparent, let everybody be able to see that wall, um, and, and have inclusive conversations with the whole product community. We're continually discovering and delivering your high value product. So once we have discovered our options, selected the high value options, we then allocate those to a plan. It could be your next release, uh, it could be the next iteration, which would be the now view, the release would be the preview, the roadmap, which we were just talking about today, is, is the big view. So we um, release or deliver the product, and then we check our assumptions about the value we're going to get from the product. So that this also requires some brave leadership on the part of product management, which means we're going to set up some metrics so that we can check, validate, did we get that feedback? Do we get the sign up of the customers? Do we get the hits if, to the web page if we're talking about a software product? Um, what is a, maybe even customer surveys? We have to figure out what those metrics are to get feedback and constantly tune what we're going to deliver in the next cycle. So discover, deliver, ongoing uh, practice. And it actually is quite disciplined. Mm -hmm. For a mature product, we still are doing the same cycle. The, um, the sunset for the product may be closer in time than if you're you know, a, a newer product and you're going to uh, teenagehood and adulthood. You may be looking at future retirement and how to leverage the product um, for the rest of its life cycle, how to keep it tuned and, and uh, performing the way it needs to perform 
in the market and maybe have um, its grandchildren take its place over time. But the essential practices are the same. Having good, what we call structured conversations, look holistically at the product, um, identify your validation criteria. First, driven by value considerations, um, I like to mix a combination of strategic and arithmetic or uh, mathematical because it appeals to both the big vision thinkers as well as the detailed thinkers. For those of you that are familiar with Myers-Briggs, how we take in information. The ends are the intuitors and they can see the connections. This is where strategic tools like the Boston box, a, a, a matrix where you're looking at or a matrix where you're looking at market fit and, and a long-term value. Pick your matrix, it doesn't matter, but at least you can plot things um, along that scale. So the N's really like that. But then we have the S's, the what's called the sensors, who really need to have detail, who want to see the data. Show me the data. This is where a weighted prioritization matrix works. And you take your value considerations and plot them as columns, and then weight the items that are more important, and you come up with a number. And you can say, oh, well, that feature set is more important than that feature set. And you combine that with the strategic analysis to then make a decision. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I would um, emphasize that we want to have clarity. Once you do some analysis to do your prioritization, who is going to make the final decision? And usually it's going to be the product manager. But make those decisions in a collaborative way. Get input from the rest of the team. So that's the first thing. Over many years, this issue of decision making has been uh, key. And having collaborative decisions is, is key. So um, uh, I would also say pick your tools very carefully, like the either a strategic or you know, uh, one that gives you a number and combine them, but you don't want to do too many because it's going to be overwhelming. So you want to have a combination of a few tools along with value considerations, clarity around decision making, and be very transparent when you've made a decision and how you're going to know whether the decision was a good one. Test your decisions continually.